But yeah, they 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 call it that he came out red all over like a hairy garment. Like I just said, his blood showed forth through his skin. You know? That's why there's no such thing, there's no such thing as a so-called white man. Alright? And matter of fact, when me and the brother we, we, we went to Lancaster yesterday, you know, there it was a book in there called The Red Man versus the White Man. And I'm like, <laughs> that's wicked as hell, man. Because white just means, you know, pure. That's what white represents, pure. So there so them so-called white people who try to say that they're pure. And they call in, they 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 gave their name, which they're the real red people. You know, they gave their name to 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 the the so to, to the Gadites, you know. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, just just what's, what's the name? Uh, what's the name? Right? Yeah, I saw, I saw. I saw. So it means uh, I saw. I I saw. I which is Esau, and the meaning of that is wasted away as he, man. Why? Because they ain't had the same pigment that that, that we had. You know, so he just looked at like, Dan, like he, he's nothing, he's wasted, that's a, that's a waste. And why did the Lord let him look like that? Why did the Lord bring him out like that? Because he hated him from the beginning, man. This ain't nothing new. The Lord hated Esau from the beginning, man. So that, that, so that ain't nothing uh, 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 new about the Lord having hate, man. But that, right up, right up, right up, Scooby was saying, we can free the no man for sure. No, because that, well, I, I want to say he was a Jake, man. But he, you know, he has some understanding, uh, knowledge of of, of, uh, of of the RFID Bible chip. But as soon as me and the brother was about to go into who his enemy is, because like I've said, if he's a Jake, all right, you might look like a so-called white man. I was trying to give him some, 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 one to grow on, so to speak. You know, to let him know, like when we cuss out here and cuss you crackers out, we're not going, we're not going according to the way you look. All right, we're going according to your spirit, man. All right, this thing right here has nothing to do with color, man, but everything to do with your spirit. Nationality. Yo, cut your nationality. It has everything to do with your nationality. Man. So if your if your bloodline does not go back to a so-called black, Latino, and Native American, you're a heathen. Alright? Matter of fact, prime example. When I was at work. Matter of fact, next time. Right. Matter of fact, read that book. So Proverbs 28 and 1. It says the wicked flee. When no man pursue it, but the righteous are bold as a lion. That's right. So that dude just ran up the street because he didn't he didn't want to hear, you know. He, he he wanted to hear just that one part, but once once it got a little heated for him, he he hauled ass up the street. Matter of fact, grab a a bunch of times sometimes he don't want to hear. It's bitter at first. It was bitter. It was just sweet in his mouth, but it was bitter, you know. Because this this truth is bitter sweet. And I ain't even gonna say that that guy really liked the fact that the RFID microchip was the mark of the beast, but he he had some uh, knowledge of it, all right. So he wasn't completely oblivious to well, he wasn't completely ignorant to the truth, man. All right. He didn't know it was the mark of the beast, so we sat here and he said, now the reason why I'm getting this scripture because he said that he liked the, he liked the conversation that we had about the RFID microchip. But once we started going into Jacob and Esau, he had to walk away. I'm good, huh? So Ezekiel 3 and 1 says, Moreover he said unto me, Son of man, eat the eat that thou findest, eat this roll. That's right. And go go speak unto the house of Israel. That's right. So that roll that he's talking about, man, is this Bible, these scriptures. He said, Eat the eat, eat what thou findest. So that's what we find in getting the, the, the breakdowns, the knowledge, and the understanding of the scriptures. Eat what we find. It. So to eat something, you have to digest it. So after you digest it, what you do, you come out here and you teach your people. All right? 
And when we teach our people, it ain't no holding back nothing. You know, we not sitting here sugarcoating the truth. All right, we going to give it to you like I said earlier. Straight, no chasing. All right? Go ahead, all right. It says, it says, so I opened my mouth and because, so like, and he caused me to eat that roll. That's right. So he opened his mouth and he caused him to eat the roll. Go ahead. It says, and he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll right. that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. That's right. So in his mouth, it was sweet like honey, man. So that's like when you first, 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 you fresh, you first come into this truth, man. You hype, man. You like, oh, man, I'm an Israelite. Yo, I'm the greatest person on the face of this earth. You know? I'm God's soul a person. His souls are people. You know, I'm going to be delivered out of here. Well, there's two ways you're going to get delivered out of here, too, man. All right? But you start hearing about all those things, and, and, and it begins to sound good to you. You know? It's sweet to you. Like how people be like, oh, that's sweet. You know? That's, that's how they say once they start finding out. But once the, once the trials and tribulations set in, go ahead, huh? It says, and he said unto me, son of man, go get thee to the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Oh yeah, yeah, Salah, I'm, I'm sorry, Salah. Uh, it's up verse three, Ezekiel chapter three, verse three. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowel with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. But yeah, I'm trying to get this scripture what talks about when they hit his belly, it, it was bitter. Because you're going to have parts of this truth that you agree with, you know, and parts that you're going to be like, damn, that's kind of rough. You know, but that and all, all those things are set up for certain men to be, uh, to, to stumble and, and fall out. You know? Well, well, well the, 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 the bitter things are like when you, when you come in, you know, you, you lose your your, your, uh, your your woman you may lose you may lose your house you know you might lose your kids you might you, you might just just very well lose everything like and that's a, that's another reason why we brought out the story of job earlier man because look at what job went through look at all the hell that job caught man you know that Job had everything. So this whole 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 Israelite thing is not for 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 glory, for our uh, for ourselves, man. You see us out here on the camera like all oh, them blues look like they doing all right. You don't know what type of hell we got going on in our personal lives, man. But guess what? We still come out here and do the work of your how about me our shop, man. We still do it. You know? And once we first came in, we was like, yo, these dogs, like, we hearing things like, damn, yo, this, this is real good. This is down the dirt. And once reality set in, once, 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 once the, once the role got bitter to us, we like, oh, shit. We got, damn, we got to. But guess what? You, you got to bear that cross, man. All right? So in Revelation 10 and 9, and I went unto the angel and said unto him, give, give, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up right. and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. There we go, right there, man. He went to the angel, he said, give me that book. So that's like dudes coming up to us talking about, yo, I want some knowledge. Yo, give me that knowledge. Let me give it to you. All right. 
It's going to be in your mouth sweet once you start tasting. Oh, man, that's sweet. Then you get the bitter part. That's why the, the things that John the Revelator, that he saw throughout the scriptures, that the Lord told him to go sit with that angel with Yahweh shot. And he told him to write. So, so those things that John the Revelator saw, you know, that, that, that blew his fucking mind. That, that blew his mind. Cause like, you know, it was, it was sweet to him. You probably seen, he seen the, uh, cause you know, he, he saw those things, man. He saw, um, the, the men of the Lord being crowned, you know, so you saw them getting their crowns. You saw your eyes shine in the midst of all of them, you know, then he started seeing that destruction of America, man, and other places. He started seeing the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, he saw all of those things, man. He saw the beast rise, NATO and all that. He saw World War I and World War II. And he didn't even know what he was seeing, man. So that had to be bitter to him. Because he had to take the whole book, man. Eat everything. The same way we do. So it ain't no leaving out nothing. Which one major thing you have, um, do still to this day get the whole rape issue misconstrued. And we not sit here at Great Millstone talking about go out and rape a 12 year old girl. Go out and do it right now. So whoever, whoever's out there teaching, well, uh, uh, saying that we teaching that is bearing false witness. It was a video on Polite, but Polite was with the apostles and elders. And Polite, those words came out of Polite's mouth. So about, oh, you saying we can rape 12 year old girls? <laughs> Only thing he said is that when a, when a woman, a, a girl hits her flower, when she hit, hits puberty, meaning she has her period, that means she can, uh, uh, she's a woman. She, she's, a, she's able to have kids. Are we saying as soon as she's able to have kids, go right there and sleep with her? As soon as her prayer is over, go have sex with her? No, we're not telling you that, man. And then, and that, that was, that's lawful back in the ancient times. It's going to come back to that. And when a, when a boy turns 12 years old, or, or he, 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 he reaches puberty, he becomes a man. All right? And it was lawful, and it, it could be lawful for those two to sleep together at 12 years old. All right. Even King David had a had a wife that was young, and even though she had her period and all that, he still didn't sleep with her until she got a little old. For you dummies going around talking about we teaching that nonsense and the whole rape issue, that means to take by force, man. That has nothing to do with sex at all, man. You niggas get all emotional and caught up in, in, in Esau's definition. Because for one, you wasn't taught to look up words, man. You hear the word rape, all he said, he said it, it was lawful to rape. That means just take a woman by force. Physically put your hands on it and grab her like, yo, you coming with me. And they say he, he grabbed her, threw her on the ground and, and, and started having sex with her. I don't say nothing like that. Matter of fact, after you grab her, you go over that real quick, man. For, for, for you niggas that, that, that lack understanding, man. You simple-minded niggas, man. And then, furthermore, you go out there and, and you bear false witness because you, you're, you're being a stumbling block to other, other brothers that might want to come in, man. But guess what? If, it, if, it's, if it's meant for that brother to come amongst the a, amongst a congregation of your howl by Hashem Yahushua, it's nothing anybody can do about it. Now, this was a law in the ancient times. If a woman wasn't betrothed, meaning married. All right? And also, you had to pray her father. So, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 28, says, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin. That's right. Matter of fact, you 
And we're going to break it down as simple as possible for you. For you simple minded niggas out there, man. It says if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, where virgin is on. Um, Bakwala, it means, um, That's an actual virgin. Because if you find a damsel that's a virgin, she 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 hasn't slept with another man. Alright? And also she she's a, a woman of a marital age. Not saying, but she she, she wasn't sleeping around. So this virgin is Baku. So it's talking about an actual virgin. Not a woman that went around having sex. Go ahead, all right. Then you have other uh Definitions of virgin, like in the New Testament, when it says virgin, it's uh, part parthenos, which means a woman of a mar marriageable age. Right. And then uh, I think Alma, which is the other Hebrew form of a woman of a marriageable age. That's right, that's right. Um, so it's, oh, it says, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, so a betrothed is, is being being uh, married, or or is uh, about to be given into marriage. She's promised to somebody else. It says betrothed, it says engaged. Exactly. Uh, engaged. Yeah, it says engaged to engage for matrimony, a spouse. Right. So that means she has no man and she's not promised to a man. Alright? So if you found a damsel when you was walking around, boy, you gonna be with a sex. And lay these, these are not our these are not our words. It says and lay hold on her. Lay hold so that you physically grab her like this. Come on. What's that? It says, uh, the Pasha says to catch, handle, lay hold, take hold, seize, seize. The rest? That's right. Grab? That's right. So, you can use the word right when, 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 uh, 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 when the cops come in and lock you up, grab you off the streets, what they do? They seize you. They take hold of you, put you in handcuffs. So, they rape you off the streets. It's, it, it's that simple, man. It ain't say nothing about having sex with her, with her at all, man. It said take hold to seize. What's up, boys? Says, says. To grasp, do you grab him? You physically grab him like this. Whatever you throw over your shoulder, come on, you coming with me? Good, huh? says, that's, the, that's the condition of our women, man. And lie with her, it's like, um, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, yes, uh, the word, which is uh, the word uh, lie in Hebrew, it says um, to lodge, to lie sexually, of sexual, I'm sorry, to lie of sexual relations. So that, that's not meaning you immediately do that. So you take hold of her, take her home. You're taking her by force, man. Go ahead, they can never dream about this stuff. It says, and lie with her, and they be found. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver. That's right. And she shall be his wife because he have humbled her. That's he right. may not put her away all his days. That's right. So you're taking the woman by force. Man. That's the first act. So that's rape, taking her by force, man. Because of course you go want the woman, so you take her back to your place or whatever. 
you know, y'all might get busy. Now you have to pay the father for that. All right? 50 shekels. All right? You got to pay the father 50 shekels, man. And, and she shall be a wife. These niggas nowadays is that's, uh, sexually, um, uh, uh, you could say sexually molesting these women, man. They're not paying the father, man. All right? They, they, they lay down with a woman and then put them to death after they took them by force, man. All right? So they, 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 this is a law that happened back in, a, in, in the ancient world, man. Are we telling brothers to go out here and do that right now? No. You'll be a fool if you go do that right now. All right? So that word rape means to take by force, grasp, seize. So when we get uh, uh, Lord's will, when, when the Most High, Yahweh Bashin Yahweh comes back and, 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 the, and the angels beam us up, how are they going to do it? They're going to do it gently? Like, oh, come on, guys, let's go. They're going, they're going to, to, uh, uh, to seize you, man. Take you with force off this earth, man. Break you, so to speak. It ain't going to be against your will, you know, because we want to get up out of here. But you have dudes that that, that fall out and, and, and get, get, get all emotional over things like that. When it's in the Bible, man. And you hear words like rape, and the first thing that goes in your mind is, is the way Esau, is what Esau says it is, man. Well, you know Esau's a damn liar, man. This is a law in our book, man. But that's the, the, and those words in that book, man, they're not our words, man. Those are the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, man. And for you dudes that can't get that, or you can't get it through your thick skull, the, the, uh, the Lord is not dealing with you, man. He clearly can't be dealing with you. Something as minor as one word. You have a whole uh, uh, dudes get, get fall out over one word, man. No, and we're not sitting there telling you to go do that. So if anybody say that they was in Great Millstone and we told them to go out and, and rape a 12 year old girl, there's a damn lie, man. And any nigga that do that, it, that that's in Great Millstone and claiming Great Millstone, you know, you, and I, I pray that the Lord uh, give you your righteous judgment. Man. You know? Because that's not something that, that we're going to teach you to go ahead and do. You in captivity. You're supposed to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, man. All right? I mean, basically, I'm, I'm, you know, roughly rounding it off. Like, uh, I was looking up how much 50 shekels of silver would be equivalent to today in, like, American dollars. It's like, uh, you know, less than, like, $450. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm Thank you. 
That's the book of Psalms, chapter 49 and 1. It says, Hear this, all ye people, give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. I will incline my ear and uh, in my ear to a parable. I will open my dark sayings upon the heart. Yeah, so the most high is gonna basically wait, he's gonna uh give us the elect, you know, he's gonna give them understanding of what the scriptures we're talking about. He's gonna make us uh, you know, perceptive to, to understanding the deep dark breakdowns of parables and prophecies of the scriptures. Point being, like we just brought up, the whole rape situation. Alright. Verse 5 says, Wherefore should I fear? In the days of evil, when the iniquity of my hills shall compass me about. Verse 5, Psalms 49 and 5 says, Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity of my hills shall compass me about? This is Psalms 49 and 5. It says, Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil? When the iniquity of my hills shall compass me about. Yeah, so like basically, you know, like you always say, if you if you're a man of the Lord and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, why why would you fear? Because the Lord is gonna basically have uh, mercy on you, basically. He's gonna protect you. Like you read, you know, Psalms 91, when it talks about how the most high is gonna uh you know protect this, protect this, you know, have his feathers over us, protect us from all the uh, the pestilence, the scare, the fowler. This is uh, Psalms 91 and 1. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret, in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh Bashim Shah, He is my refuge and my fortress. My power in Him will I trust. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Yeah, it says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. So right now, you know, we're in the secret place of the Most High. The Most High is showing us his, uh, his scriptures and his breakdowns and his prophecies that are happening. And he's basically going to protect us, you know, low willing word from the elect. He's going to protect us from, you know, the, uh, the martial law. Well, you know, we're going to, of course, we're going to but he's gonna he's gonna uh, make it to where we're we're basically uh you know saved you know we don't have to we don't have to be hit as hard as the uh the two thirds and all that are gonna get hit and it's and also the uh the nuclear destruction of america uh verse verse four says he shall cover thee with his with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his trust shall be thy shield and buckler. Yeah, it's truth. This truth, it says, this truth shall be uh, our shield and buckler. So, you know, this truth is what, what protects us, what guides us. This is what separates us from. This is what separates us from the average, you know, so uh, two thirds of Israelites out there don't have a clue of what's going on or care or or have the name of the Most High. Like that one nigga. I ain't had no clue what the other all about the mother's world. Yeah, you know, our people they know about anything that has to do with the world, they can answer like that, but then something that's spiritual, it's like they don't have a clue. They don't even think about it. Uh verse verse five says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the ar for the arrow that flyeth by day. Yeah, so we're not gonna be scared of the martial law or the, the arrow that fly by day because the scriptures talk about um, you know, uses the metaphor of an arrow, an archer, for the, the thermonuclear missiles because the thermonuclear missiles, you know, it could be shot from one end to the earth onto another, you know? Um, you know, this is what we're always bringing out because this is the this is the only thing that, uh, you know, as far as we, the understanding that the Most High gave us, this is the only thing that this can mean because we have technology that was created to basically uh, take out nations and destroy, destroy this. this. As you can see, this, uh, this, this, um, you know, illustration that we always use about the uh, end of the world, 
It's basically showing the thermonuclear missiles being shot from the other countries to America. just was saying about the scriptures referring to uh, um, the, the arrows being of a strong archer to uh, uh, those being uh, the, the uh, thermonuclear missile. Now, just to back the brother up, this is out of the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 16, verse 16. It says, like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. All right? It says, uh, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the beginning, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils, what shall I do when these evils shall come? Yeah, so that was uh, that was uh, Ezra talking, you know, the things that he seen. He said, "Who shall deliver me in those days?" So he, he he saw just like how you had other prophets that uh, seen visions before they happened. So he's thinking, you know, who's gonna deliver him in those days? So in the time of uh, fucking serious man. This is our second Ezra chapter 16 and 18. It says the beginning of sorrows and great mourning, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and power and, and so like the beginning of wars and power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils, what shall I do when these evils come shall come? Yeah, so he's saying what shall he do? You know, woes me, woes me. And he's saying, um, you know, what's, what is he going to do when these evils come? Because he can see the, uh, you know, the martial law, the uh, day of the Lord, all these things come, coming, coming to fruition or whatever. And he, he sees them happen. He's wondering, well, what's he going to do? So, so, you know, like like one of the scriptures that we always bring out is, you know, the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. So right. he's saying in that scripture, you can extrapolate the fact that he's saying that he's going to be He's gonna be. What is he going to do when those days come? I mean, he's gonna be right here. Matter of fact, this is up in this one real quick. Now, this is what the brother was saying earlier about the um, when it talks about the the bolt, the, the arrow being 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 a, um, the nuclear missiles, because it can shoot it from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. You can't do that with a regular uh with a regular arrow. This is our uh, second Ezra chapter sixteen and thirteen. It says, "For strong is for strong is he." For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp, and shall not miss, when they begin to be shot from into the ends of the earth. Behold, the plagues are sent, and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. Yeah, so it's talking about the thermonuclear missiles, because once they're shot, you know, the, the most high is going to have it to where they don't miss, they're going to hit their target. They're gonna destroy Babylon. You know, it's not talking about you know Superman shooting an arrow and then going all the way across the world and all that stuff. And when it talks about that right arm, strong as the the right arm that bridges the boat, that's up. I hope y'all bitches fall the fuck out. Of but when it's talking about that right hand bending the boat, all right, that's talking about those missile solid. Strong as the right hand that that does that. All right. So just know, man. We 
we living in real serious times, man. All right? And you Akim guys, stay strong, man. Stay up. You know? Keep the faith. Put on the full armor of your hollow boss and your side, man. Because things are about to get real hectic, man. The RFID microchip is here in America. All right? There's no denying that. There's no getting around that. All right? All right, with that, shout out to the next time.